everybody, welcome back to Man Cave. So, quick little video I wanted to put out. Nothing too special, except that I found yet another kind of useful and interesting tool for inspecting brass. And you can use it to inspect all sorts of other stuff too. On eBay, they got these endoscope cameras. They're just little cameras on a long flexi cable. Like, yeah. You know, and plug into a, a typical USB 2.0 port and some of them have the little controller for the lights so you can dim the light or crank up the, the brightness which makes it handy. It's not uh, as fine a control as I'd prefer but it'll get the job done. And you know I got my hands on a bunch of uh, uh, 30-06 brass that was fired out of a Garand and it's Lake City and so I was starting to take a look at it and I was seeing some funky stuff in there, like maybe case head separation was starting to take place, but I just wasn't sure. And, you know, I, I did the, you know, I took my flashlight and looked in through the flash hole and looked into the, the, the case mouth and still couldn't quite tell. Took my little uh, bent paper clip probe and, you know, jammed it in there. I still wasn't sure. Um, I even got to the point where I took the old rigid tubing cutter, this little guy right here. And then I remembered I had this great little awesome camera. So you get on the interwebs. Well, first you get on the eBay and you pay your, uh, I think this thing cost me like 12 bucks shipped from uh, Candy Rock Mountain, Guangzhou Province, China. And you know, I mean, hey, it's great. The only downside is that it's going to take, you know, three, four, five, six weeks to get there. And it's, that's kind of a pain when you're waiting for something if you really need it. But anyway, it finally got here. There's all sorts of apps you can use regardless of the operating system, they send you some software with the thing. It's on a little, one of those little tiny, you know, like three and a half inch CD deals. That just gets pitched. Yeah. yeah. Send you one of these, you know, generic CD. Who knows what's on it? Malware, spyware, Trojans. Yeah, you, you, garbage. Toss it in the skip. Go find your own software. So all you got to do Plug the thing in, get your app up and running, whatever it is you're using. I just crank up the brightness, all right, and then boom, right into the case. And you can see what I'm seeing right now. Now, it doesn't have the best macro focus, as you can tell, but it does good enough. And it turns out what I was seeing on most of this brass is in fact a little thinning of the case wall. You can kind of see it right about, it's right there. But it's not bad and it's something that's workable, you know, I can work around. Work with, I guess I should say. You know, eventually it's going to be uh, no good. I might get one or two firings out of this stuff. But you know, again, you just kind of... And if your brass is nice and clean, because I already uh, stainless tumbled this and everything, you just crank down the brightness a little bit, get rid of some of that glare, all right? and you're just back in business. You check out whatever you got to check out. Now you can even cut out the ambient light from the flash hole. That's my finger over the flash hole right now. And get rid of it. Get a little more ambient light in there from the from the back side. And you can see those distinct ridges in there. I know it may not look like much to you, but if you look at the brass with your eyeball and then you look at it with this, you go, ah, okay, so that's what I'm looking for. It's just a matter of training yourself, training your eyeball to know what you need to find, right? So that's that's really all that there is to it. You know, you can even flip it this way, go into the flash hole, and take a look through the flash hole if you really want. And you can see, you can kind of see the reflection sitting right there. Of, uh, wow, it's like reflecting all sorts of weird stuff. Anyway. You can, you know, you can just turn the case and you can check for those lines that are further up in the, uh, the body of the case. So anyway, that was that. It's just a really handy little tool. It's, you know, for the 12 bucks that it's going to cost you, order two or three of my figure, because they're probably going to break eventually. But wait, it gets better. Because this sucker, unlike some of the other ones that I found, by the way, this is five and a half millimeter. So this will fit... Uh, pretty much any 30 caliber or uh, around that size uh, barrel or uh, or casing, but it'll also fit into into you know your 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 odd six. It'll fit into your 308. It'll fit into your uh, Mauser. Um, it'll even just 
barely squeeze into an AR-15. Um, but it gets a little snug, and I don't know that, that I'm really that comfortable with this. This, this housing's plastic, so you know it's not gonna scratch anything up. Some of the other ones are aluminum, and they're anodized, and I wouldn't wanna be running that up and down the barrel of any rifle, or pistol for that matter, that I cared about. Um, but still, works great on shotgun barrels too, because especially a 20 or a 12 gauge, because the the diameter of the barrel is such that you can get this thing far away enough back from a, a questionable area or a problem area, so you're not running into the macro focus issue, and you can see exactly what it is that you want to uh, take a look at. So let's stuff this thing down the the bore of a rifle here. Let's see what we can see. And I haven't found any that are smaller than five and a half millimeters, so I'm just going to grab my one of my OT sixes and and open the action, make safe. And I'm going to just drop the bolt out. And you can go in through the chamber, you can go in through the muzzle. It doesn't really matter. You know what? What am I doing here? You all want to be able to see that. Okay. So we take this little sucker. And in the muzzle she goes. Crank up the lighting a little bit. There we go. Look, you can see right there is a big glob of copper right there that I missed in my cleaning thanks to California and yet more of its stupid laws about having to use copper everywhere I've been running a lot of uh, barns projectiles through this working up loads I've, I've found one that's okay but uh, cleaning that copper out is a pain you know it comes with a, a two meter cable or so they say all right, and I mean I can just walk this sucker just all the way down there I can stop it, I can turn it, you know, I can adjust the light level if I need to. A little bit too much. And you'll find that adjusting the light level actually can can make certain features or or uh, you know flaws, whatever, stand out more, which is incredibly handy. So we'll just roll on down. And you can see now we're getting towards the throat, and that's actually re a really good uh, use for this too, is you can you know get a good idea, or at least an idea, of what your throat looks like. Um, yeah, that's me just fiddling with it. And I know it's going to show up a little bit darker. Let me see if I can crank up the brightness on the screen. There we go. All right. You can inspect your chamber for any pits. Anything like that. Yeah, just give it a quick spin around on a jig. Now it's not a precision tool, it's not like it's a Hawkeye bore scope, but it cost me eleven bucks and it's still letting me get in there and get a pretty good look at stuff. I mean I can get an idea now how clean the uh, the lands are, which in this case they aren't, at least not in terms of copper. I mean I all the powder fouling's out. And what's interesting is you can see where there's a lot of copper and then it kind of dissipates and then you pick it up again right? as you're coming down and coming back out and then it dissipates and you pick it up again right? and just on and on and on. What that tells me is that there's probably some variation in the distance between lands on this rifle. This is a Marlin, what do they call them, X7Ls. Um, they're really inexpensive rifle but it actually shoots alright. But there's some variations in that in that uh, dimension, which means it could probably stand to have it so uh, have the bore lapped a little bit, and I actually have the stuff to do that. And now I'm going into the chamber end, right? So we can take a, a nice look at the chamber. Right, and then into the chamber we go. And again, it's not perfect, but I can get some kind of idea of just how bad the wear is up here in the lead. Which, from what I'm seeing, actually isn't that bad. I'm surprised. I've been putting a lot of hot loads to this. 
anyhow, I just thought it was kind of a neat little gadget, gizmoid. You know, uh, you can use it for all sorts of other things too. Your imagination's a limit. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you find this useful. Uh, please comment, like, share, subscribe, dislike, flame away. Doesn't matter. Um, it's always appreciated to, to get feedback from people, all right? Have fun out on the range.